So today's word maintaining consistency in your thesis webinar. And what we will aim to do is have you set up, um, there's two different templates to choose from and choose which one you prefer to use, but we'll demonstrate both today. I'll explain what the benefits are of using that template. And the template does follow the procedures of the higher degree by research submission and examination of thesis policy. I have two different sample thesis to have a look at and you can modify to what you prefer. We'll talk about fonts and then we'll actually use the template, apply the heading, put in some text, look at um, how you could change the template to what um, styles you may need to implement for your type of writing. The last one I have a chapter I've already written and I can show you how you would then use that template to put it into it so it all sits together nicely. So this is the thesis formatting at ANU. So today's workshop is what is under the bullet point of number one, that we're using this thesis chapter template to maintain consistency in your thesis. We have other webinars. Tomorrow there's an EndNote webinar and next month in July we have a Mendeley webinar. If you want to use to support your references. Zotero is also used at ANU and there's um, a support online through zotero.org and we do have some contacts at the law library that can assist with your learning of Zotero. Number three is applying captions for your tables, maps, figures, and charts. This is very valuable and it's beneficial to begin using early in the process, that's why it's sort of placed there. But next week in the last webinar, putting your thesis all together, I do cover applying captions that can actually be linked to your chapter numbers. Step number four just refers to after today we set up a few of our chapters and we said um, we would, I recommend keeping them separate as you can throughout the writing process because you're going back and forth with your supervisor, you're going to send it maybe to an editor and then you bring it all together at the end and that's what we cover next week in the webinar. So that was the background of what we're doing today and how it'll all come together if you come to next week's webinar. We're going to start with why we use a chapter template. It is the basic structure of a new Word document and it inherits three areas, the styles, such as the fonts that are built into the table contents, the list of tables, list of figures and any other lists required. These styles, although they create the table of contents in the lists, they also allow you to navigate in Word to quickly move throughout your chapter. The page settings of your paper size and margins are all set up in the template. Um, there are specific margins required, which we'll look at shortly um, for an ANU thesis. So if it's built in, then you don't have to worry about making sure it's changed each time. And lastly is your header, footer, page numbers and the layout of where your text sits on the page. So for the templates I've created today, they actually include headers. Um, if you don't like them, you can remove them, but you do need the footers for your page numbers. So Imogen might paste this link, it's very long. <laughs> You can either go directly to the policy or you can go through the services page. If we go through the services page, it's uh, useful because some of the documents that we're going to use later today are on that page. So what I might do is just exit PowerPoint and go to that services page and go to the policy. So you don't have to actually go to the policy, you can follow along on the screen. So let me just change my share over.
And this is the services page where um, if you've came across it before today's workshop to register, um, we've got two of the samples, which I emailed you to just to make it easier, but I always keep them in the center of this page here. And along the side, uh, at the end of the workshop, I'll remind you about the training materials, but we don't need them for today. We'll just follow along. In the related links box, we have the procedure. I've actually linked to it on the policies page in case it changes throughout the year. Um, it came into effect um, as dated, and that way if it does change, you'll always have the correct policies at ANU page. I'm gonna go all the way down to section 32. And that's what we build into our template today. The format of a thesis is double spaced or one and a half space, bullet point A indicates. Single spaced is used for the quotes, footnotes and bibliographies. So with the actual line spacing of your paragraphs, um, majority of people I work with use one and a half spacing because it condenses the amount of pages the reader has to go through. Number B, letter B is in a font that's easy to read, no smaller than 11 point for text and nine point for footnote text. For a digital thesis, it's recommended to use a font from the sans serif family. And I've got some samples to show you in a moment. I'll finish covering the policy first of what sans serif fonts are. Letter C is all margins are within the header and footer and settings at 2.5 from the top and bottom. Um, I've set that up and when I've set up the margins of 2.5. So we're just for everyone is all digital thesis is what you will be um, submitting and so all four margins will be 2.5. To talk about the different types of fonts, I've got a few here. Today's exercise and samples are in Arial 11. So I've just made that um, same as the first paragraph. So everything in the first paragraph will be similar to what we'll be using today. Ariel and Ariel. I've just given you a sample of heading level three, which is in 12 points. So the headings one and two are different. The other option, I'll just scroll up so it's at the top of your screen, is using Calibria. This is how Calibria looks. So you can notice a bit of difference in the font when I bring it all back together of which one looks best and it's personal preference of what you want to use. Tahoma and Vernanda are two other types of sans serif fonts you could choose from. So you'll notice if you look at the word sampling technique, if you use Vernanda, it's quite larger and it's tighter together than some of the other ones. So that's how they have different different types of fonts. So with Arial, I would recommend using 11 point, like this one is, not 12 point. But Calibria, you could use 12 point because it's a smaller font in general. So Calibria 11 point might be a bit small, but it's still allowed because 11 points allowed in the policy. So that's a few samples. Um, I sort of move around from a few different pages here. But I wanted to show you um, the next one before we get started was on the page we had different ways you could, different ones you could download. And to show you the best way is a little map here, um, a table, sorry. We have with chapter numbering where you have 1.1 um, already set up and it's using Arial 14 point for your headings and then Arial 11 point, 1 point 1.5 spacing for your paragraphs. So chapter numbering means the chapter is coded in and we'll have a look at that so you understand what I mean by coded in and the 1.1 1 .1 is coded in and set to go. 
some people and some disciplines prefer not to have that numbering. Um, so this one I've actually allowed you to have type the word chapter one and research context and it's completely free text but it will be marked to go into your table of contents um, and then we start with uh, introduction. I've turned on the numbering one and 1.1 but in some areas they don't even use numbering so both of these templates numbering can be totally removed if you're not using that with your type of writing. So we'll look at each of these two different samples, execute it, put in some text, create chapter one, and we'll also create chapter two because you need to know how to change the automatic numbering so that it links to the chapter number, chapter two, three, and onwards. I'm just gonna go back to my PowerPoint slides and explain, um, I might just make that smaller. I'm going to have to go to PowerPoint a few times, um, so I might just use it with the full screen. With this, we'll be using the template. We'll apply the heading numbers. But as you're using it, if you want to make any changes to the template, you can think about that because we will go in and modify some of the styles later. You may want to change the font type or the size. You could build in multi-level numbering. I don't know if we'd have time for that today, but it's something you could contact me after today. And we actually look at the quotes and how they're indented. And as I mentioned, last thing this afternoon will be taking a chapter and applying one of the chapter templates. The next few slides I'll come back to as we need them. Um, but the main one is today I'm actually teaching on Windows, but Mac users can follow along. And we've got your um, Mac users, you have a button called Styles Pane, and in Windows we're going to be using the launcher today, so I'm on Windows. So if we go to um, your file structure and Imogen might put in the link. Oh, I don't think I gave her the link. Oh yes, sorry, the link of the services page. If anyone hadn't downloaded the, from the email, the two, um, the two templates I've saved in a thesis folder and I've saved the two of them that are on the services page. So if you could save both of them. And you can notice by my version here that these are not Word documents, but they're Word templates. And what happens is as soon as we're about to execute one, it actually no longer has that name. It'll just be a blank document. So we're first of all going to use the one called thesis chapter numbering template. So if you could double click that and give yourself a moment for Word to open up and you should see what I'm seeing, a blank document with chapter one. And most everything I do is Manage, manageable on a Mac, um, but do call out if I've forgotten um, if I have any instructions for Mac users. But everyone should be placed right after the one, and you'll notice you cannot click on chapter one, it, it's coded. So we're ready to start typing, and then I might explain a bit more as we go, and we'll look at our styles pane as we go in a moment. So if we just get in some text to begin with, so you just start typing right after that number one. Research context is the name of our chapter. Then since we already have our next heading ready to go, can you put your cursor right after the 1.1 and click? This will be our heading called background research. Then we might turn on our styles pane at this time 
And so on the windows, on our home tab, we have all our styles, but it's easier if you use this launcher in the corner and you now have a styles fly out. So Mac users, you just have a, a large button called styles pane. The Windows one looks a bit different than the Mac. The only difference is Mac, you have a prompt right at the top that tells you what heading you're in. The Windows users, if you're clicked on the word research, you can see you're in heading level two. So all of your sections um, are heading two. If the, the next one that we'll do eventually will be 1.1, uh, 1.2 and that'll be heading two. But we'll also do some subheadings. So place your cursor at the end of the H and press enter. And we have a new style that started and you can just check by looking at your styles pane. On mine, on the windows, we just have a large blue border around body text. On the Mac, yours will be just above and it says current style body text thesis. That means you're ready to start typing your paragraph, but instead we'll enter a code in Word of equals rand 10 comma 10, close bracket, I'll just make my screen a bit bigger, equals R-A-N-D, open bracket 10 comma 10, close bracket, and press enter and make sure body text thesis is selected as you do this. So you'll be given some text and we're actually on page four of six. So while we're here, we might clean up the remainder of the document. On your home tab, we need to look at our show hides. So home tab, just before our styles, is our show hide, the backward letter P, turn that on. And scroll through our chapter. You'll see a few page breaks. You can either click at the end of the page break and backspace or turn your arrow into a hollow arrow and click once and delete. You'll actually have another page break if you could delete that also. I built that in so that we had our headers and footers set up. So now if we bring that back and just perhaps have one paragraph marker at the end. While we're on this page, we have a placeholder in the header. It's light gray at the moment. You can double click on the word chapter hashtag because we're in chapter one, so we need to double click. We're in chapter one, so we just delete that hashtag and put in one. Then we're actually on our even page header and on the bottom, our footer is on the other side. Scrolling back up to the previous page is our odd page header and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Looking at our header, there's a chapter title. That we actually also have to replace. So just a moment ago, I might just undo and uh, replicate what I did. When we looked at the chapter, I put a hashtag. So you have to double click on it. But I did forget to mention some people, um, different. if it's hard to double click, you can go into your insert. This is the other way to get into your header if you ever can't double click insert, there's a header drop down and edit header. So it takes you to the same place. So insert, header, edit header. So now I'm changing that hashtag to number one. I can't really code that because it gets a bit complicated, but we're also needing to manually change our odd page header also. So you just scroll up and the odd page one we just replace that chapter title with research context. 
This is in a smaller font, so you do have quite a lot of room if you have a long title. It's in Arial 9 point. It just looks large on my screen, but it's Arial 9 point, so you have lots of room to do that header of your chapter, or you can modify it if you didn't want it to be um, that long. So as you can see, the odd page header sits to that side, and it's page number three. The reason I have odd and even is one, it looks nice when you are printing a paper copy for your own purposes, um, but also as the reader is going through a 300 page thesis, they can glance what chapter they're on and what chapter number is. And we're just about to exit to get out of this. Um, I'm just gonna move my zoom toolbar to the bottom and I'm still in my header. And so along the top, because I was moving around to my tabs, there is a header footer tools tab and design. To get out of it, you can close header footer. Next, we have time to add some different headings throughout and some quotes that are built into this template. So each paragraph as we click on it, you can see on your styles, you have body text thesis. So body text thesis is 1.5 spacing, but it also has a gap at the end of a paragraph. That gap is 15 points. So you only have to press enter once and then you're set to start typing your next paragraph. So that makes it very easy when you're just sitting down and writing. You don't have to worry about pressing enter twice or anything. I have talked about in uh, the previous workshop last week um, to build in indentation. So at this point you could modify your body text thesis to have every paragraph indent the 1.27. So that's another feature. This body text thesis is full justified. So that means on the, if you look to your right side, it all lines up as full justified. If you prefer to be left justified to show you what the two paragraphs look like, this one's now left justified, this one's full justified. So later when we modify the template, you would modify the thesis so every time you start a new chapter it's already set to left so we'll do that later and that's why I said you need to keep mind of how things you would want to um, how you'd want to exit uh, what you'd want to change so we'll apply some more headings so if we go back up to the top we have research context background research and we will add a line for a new section called survey. You can type it first and then turn on the heading. So we still need to have our styles toolbar open. And anywhere on that line, you can do heading three. Next, we want to do a heading four. So we have survey, so I might just make it a bit closer so we can see if you just break this next paragraph, it doesn't matter where, and we could call it survey data 2018. And this one would be a heading four. So the difference I've made of the different fonts and the italicis is turned on on heading four. But if you think when you look at the next format too, if you want italics to be turned on at a different stage, you can change that later. So next I wanna do another heading four and I might just put it before this last paragraph on the page and this will be survey data for 2019. And so that one will be a heading four also. So as we've been creating this, I've kept the styles pane on because I know some people only have one monitor. So if we turn 
we'll do the caption, then we'll turn off the styles pane for a moment and look at the navigation pane. But let's make a caption before I forget. So if on page two, we press, we break into a little caption we might, ah, sorry, quotation we might have. On to make your document look professionally produced, I click once and I just have to carefully scroll through the styles menu. Don't click on anything. If you do, for instance, I'll click on one accidentally. If I accidentally turned on heading one, you could either undo on the top menu or you could select what you know that paragraph should be. So I know that should be body text thesis. So I would go back to body text thesis. Instead, I want to scroll down to find caption. So everyone needs to scroll. So if you sort, oh, and also if, if you can't see heading nine, you need to do what I'm doing. For those of you who don't see heading nine, you need to look at your um, options. And on the Mac, it's very similar. It's styles to show your, anyone who can't see heading nine needs to change it to all styles. Yours might be cut down to a limited list. So all of these are limited lists and we want all styles for today. Say okay. And still looking for quote and I found it. So I need to make sure I'm still on my text and press quote. So there's the quote and I've chosen it to be full justified RL11 italic. Once again, if you want to change this or if you want to change the line spacing before or after, um, that's something you can modify as you go on to this later on. You'll notice on the last um, line of the quote, I still have that large gap. So you just press enter once and then you start your next paragraph. So we'll close our styles. So on Windows and Mac, there should be an X to close the styles. If you have dual screens, uh, you could leave it open, but for those people working maybe on a smaller screen, close your style. View tab, we want to look at navigation pane. So view tab, navigation pane. On the Mac, yours will be showing up with um, a document map. So you just want to click on the second one where there's a tab of three dots and then yours should look like mine. So did everyone find their navigation pane? There are some, um, so the navigation pane is sometimes called a document map pane in some of the older versions of um, Windows and Macs. So we can now quickly move through our document and return to any previous sections we created. We also have triangles next to each one of the subsequent headings. So we expand the survey and collapse the survey and you can see the different levels. Same with everything as you work backwards. When you've completed your thesis and have longer sections, it'll be beneficial because then you can collapse things. So for today, we can keep everything expanded because we just have small chapters. So we might take a moment to save this. It's just called document two, as I mentioned. So we need to save it as chapter one. So if you press save and we need to go back to the um, folder we created today of thesis and we can call it chapter one. So it's in my thesis folder chapter one and now it's just a simple word document and we press save. We want to add just a few more sections and then we'll save it as chapter two so we can see how the difference works with chapter two. So if you go down to after our quote, 
we can add another section and we'll call this modeling approach. Oh, sorry. We need to turn on our styles pane on the home tab and we go to the styles launcher. Home tab styles launcher and for those of you on the Mac you have the button called styles pane. Modeling approach once again we need to carefully scroll back up and we want to make it heading three. The next heading we'll create on the next page, we'll go back to a heading two. Scope of thesis, and that one can be a heading two. So if you're able to have both open, you can see my navigation pane is populating as we've quickly been adding these. And we'll just add one last section, thesis outline. Heading two. Okay. So now we can save that and chapter one is completed. Just make sure you've always changed your headers to the appropriate one and you have your page numbers. So why don't we go up to the top and I'll show you how to change this to um, chapter two. Um, we could recreate it from the beginning, but the same process takes place no matter what. And it's in the handout that I'll direct you to for after today. So you'll know how to do this for every chapter because that's the important part. So I've already hit save. That's chapter one. Just to make it easier for training today, file, save as, and call it chapter two in the same folder. File, save as, and just call it chapter two. Press save. And this one, we'll just make sure everyone's ready. We're putting our cursor right here at the beginning of R in research. And we're going to our home tab. And with our bullets, we have bullets numbering and multi list level numbering. It has a drop down. And at the very, very bottom, we want define new multi-level list. Now this is different in the um, Mac and Windows. So for the Mac users, where my mouse is hovering at the moment, you'll be working there. Just wait until I'm ready for the Windows users. Press more where I'm selecting the word more. And we do not touch anything that's gray and coded. So we do not touch this area where the um, chapter one is. We actually go over to start at and we change that to two. So for those of you on Mac, you'll have a start at. It'll just be in the center of this dialog box. So change everyone to change it to two and you'll see the reflection showing in this imagery. So it's chapter two and 2.1. 2.2. So you'll do the same for chapter three and four each time you start them. And you always need to be in this, the first instance of the heading one. So this is my heading one in this chapter and I've done it and it's flowed through. Now sometimes some of your computers may not work, but if you started a fresh document, it would work. So don't panic if it didn't work for today's exercise. It will work when you execute the template and replicate the same thing by clicking right after the, as you start, you change the multi-level list numbering to whatever chapter you're in and everything will change automatically. We did want to um, also practice with changing your numbering. If you decided you needed to bring back a level to not be a heading four, you could simply change it to a heading three and it'll alter the numbering accordingly and bring it back to the styling of a heading three. 
So very easy to use and um, apply as you need to go through. So I've just had a request to do that again. So what I might do is replicate the numbering at the beginning. So putting our cursor back on chapter two, R in research, and we look at our home tab, bullets, numbering, and the third one over is your multi-level list numbering, and there's a little drop down arrow. Define new multi-level list, because you're defining it to be the next chapter in your writing is how I explain it. And on the windows, you'd press this more button at the side. Then you'll find a start at, and you'll change that to two, which I've changed mine now. For those of you on a Mac, you'll find your start at two located in the center and the layout of your imagery of your chapter headings is off to the opposite side. That's all you need to change and you just say, okay. Next, we need to change the header because now we're in chapter two. So we double click on the chapter one header, double click. And if you can't get into it by double click clicking, insert header drop down and edit header will also take you into your headers and footers. Change one to chapter two and that's our even page header. Scroll down and our chapter, I'm sorry, we forgot to change it up top, is water quality. Chapter two is water quality. And that's our odd page header. Close header footer. And we forgot to change this one to water quality at the top of the actual chapter. Save that and we've got our sections changed as we need to and then chapter two is done. Um, I might just take a moment on the Windows machine if I do do print preview it sort of demonstrates a layout. Um, yes it does Mac it's harder to see the layout this way so on the Windows you can see chapter two has no header because our chapter is our header. It's page number one. Then if I look at how it would print, the left side is chapter two and page number two. And then our header is water quality on the other side. So when you print your version double-sided, it sits nicely with that line across the top in chapter one and two and chapter name. If you don't want it, you can abolish it and remove the line um, if you only want the page numbers. And it continues on throughout the whole chapter, so you only change it as we did and it keeps going throughout the full document. So that's chapter two in that format. So as I mentioned, we have another template that has been provided um, and it's another option for you to use. So we might close chapter two and go back to the downloads that we did. If you double click thesis chapter template and if you need to go back to the services page, it's the one called without chapter numbering, the second one, so that's the same file. It's completely blank, so we do need to turn on our show hide so we can see where we are. And this time we're allowed to type what we would like. You can see if you look at our styles panel, so if everyone could open their styles panel on the home tab styles launcher, you can drag your styles um, menu around to where you want to sit. And on the Mac, you would do styles pane. On the Mac, you would see it says current style of chapter text. And 
on the windows, you can see that mine has the dark blue around it. So I'm ready to start typing my chapter on how I want it to sit out. So for the sample I had, instead of using numeric, you could just type one. Uh, you can still just do spacebar and type the, the chapter name. I just had a different way to make it um, a different style and I did a shift enter. If you hold your shift and press enter on both Mac and Windows, it will wrap to the next line and it'll have that little arrow. So that means it's still, if you look at our styles, we're still in chapter text and we've got um, our item as one long item. So in a table of contents, it's not broken up. If I had pressed enter after chapter one, that would be one line on the table of contents. And then the word research context would be different. So there's two different ways we can um, do this. So this way it's uh, slightly lined out. Now this is only an Arial 14 point. Um, I actually convert this to Arial 20 point and small caps bold, which we'll do in a moment when we modify the template. I've just created it very generic, leaving it up to the user to modify it to what you envision your thesis to look like, because this is where you can apply certain styles. So just turning off our show hides and turning them back on, that shift enter is the trick to get it to stay together. Clicking on our next paragraph marker, we're already into our body text thesis, but we can type heading number one at this point. So we can turn on heading one on our sidebar before we, on our styles bar before we type or after you've typed, it doesn't matter. And one, reason people use this um, template is you have the flexibility to have an introduction in each chapter. Um, so it's quite useful in that regard. So if you're going to have introduction in every chapter, you might want to use this one and have heading one as your introduction because that way your captions, which we cover next week, uh, will link to the one in this introduction, which we'll turn on in a moment press enter and everyone should be on body text thesis automatically and looking at our styles menu just double ch check and then if you are you can type the formula again to get some text equals rand 10 comma 10 and press enter Now we need to change our headers and footers again. And this is similar as the previous version, same, same uh, fonts of Arial 9 point. And that's our odd page header I've modified. And then on our even page header, I changed the hashtag to number one. It's a similar concept. To close our header footer, go to your header footer design tab and close header footer. Remember at the bottom, we have a few extra page breaks we need to remove. So make sure your show hides on your home tab are on and you can select and delete those extra page breaks. So next with the numbering, because it's a bit different, we haven't turned the actual numbering on. The rule is we don't need the numbering on chapter one. We don't want one at the beginning of that. We actually want the numbering to turn on at introduction. So even on the um, handout I'll provide you, it tells you to go find your instance, first instance of heading one put your cursor right at the beginning of the I and introduction. This is important because sometimes if your cursor is elsewhere on the line, it doesn't quite work. So put your cursor there. On your home tab, bullets, 
numbering and multi-list level numbering. On the second row, third one over. So right where my mouse is, we want to select that one because it's the same concept we looked at before. The headings um, are differentiated and attached to the numbering. So click that and one has turned on. So that's our introduction and then we would get into heading two which would be background research and then we need to turn on the heading on the styles menu find heading two for background research. So then we have a next subheading just to see how it sits in this version. Heading three. So I might just break this paragraph, put in a heading three. And this one can be our survey section. The next one we'll use heading four. Heading four is where we brought in the italicis. And what I mentioned earlier is sometimes heading three you may want to modify that in the template next and make that one italicized because you may never use heading four. So if you know what you're sort of planning for your, for your heading levels, you may want to turn um, heading three into italicies. And as I said, some disciplines don't even use numbering. So you, you can just simply at any point turn off all the numbering by turning on none if it was built into the template. That just takes it off each one because we've already applied them. So this is our other version of using the template where you can um, change this to whichever way you want to um, organize it. I have actually even had um, people who don't like the word chapter on each one. They actually delete that and they've um, increased this font like significantly to something like 36 um, and then had the title on the next line perhaps in something like 22 just to make it different than just being chapter one, two, three. So that's why it gives you that flexibility because this style as we saw is simply called chapter text but it's built in to be incorporated in the table of contents so it'll still be identified there. But heading one when we've turned on the numbering and the captions that we'll do next week in the webinar will be linked to that one. So it'll know that table 1-1, table 1-2 will be linked to this heading one. So that's why we always need to have a heading one somewhere in the chapter um, thesis. So I'll just put that back to what it was. So we'll save that one so you have a sample of the next format of the template and then you can decide which one works for you. So I'll keep it as chapter O-N-E so that you can know the difference when you pull them up to look at them. Press save. And now we might do file save as chapter two because we'll practice changing the numbering in our introduction. So if we go file, save as, thesis folder, TWO, and say save. 
So this one we can now modify, chapter two, water quality. Put our cursor at the first instance of heading one, which is the I next to this number one. So you can't click on that number one. So that's why you know where you are. On our home tab, we have our bullets numbering and our multi-list level numbering. We click on the down arrow next to multi-list level numbering and define new multi-level list. And mine's already come up with it extended, but if you're on a Windows and the more is showing, press more and start at and we change it to two. For those of you on the Mac, you'll find your start at in the center again. Say OK. And once again, it's flowed through on my version. So I'm hoping it's worked on your version, but if not, um, it will work when you work on a blank new version. So there's our sections, all numbered accordingly. And we change our header to chapter two. And we scroll down to our odd page header. And while I'm at these pages, we have, as I said, even and odd page headers. We keep our chapters separate throughout the process, but when we're ready to put it all together, if you were to insert any chapter at the end of this page four, it would take chapter two's heading and just continue it on. What we learn about next week is section breaks so that you can insert a section break, so not a page break, but a section break and insert the subsequent chapters and the headings remain the same as you've created them separately. All right. So just had a question about the header again. So we're, we're into the header is starting at one and not 2.1, but um, the headers here in the, and it's done manually, the header and footer. So we just double click on it and change it to chapter two. But I think the question is more referring to the numbering. So with the numbering, if you ever just run into problems, you could just turn it off and then start again. So you would just simply say none and go through them all and turn it off and then start again. Put your cursor on the first instance of heading one. Go to our multi-level list numbering and we select the second row where it says headings and numbering attached. So we click that. It's applied number one, but we go down to multi-level list numbering in this drop down and we define new multi-level list and we change it to two to start it fresh again. And that's worked. Then we go to background research and multi-level list numbering and heading to heading imagery again to, to apply the headings. So that's what you sort of do if things didn't work for you and you needed to start again, except now that <laughs> So they reverted back to one. So I'll do multi-level list numbering, start at two and say, okay. And then it flows through. Okay. So chapter two, we've changed it to chapter two, change the numbering. And then we've got our header and footer of chapter two sitting as we are. So we hit save and we close that. And what I mentioned earlier is we will um, talk next about 
how to modify um, some templates. So I'm going to pause the recording and we'll take a five minute break and come back at just 205 should be fine. And we'll see how we can do modify any changes. Okay, we might uh, continue on and I've started the recording again. Um, to make the changes to the template, um, we actually have to be in Word. So if you could just go to a blank document and then we do file open and we go and find the template. So this is only when you're changing the template. And once you do open it, we just make the changes. We don't type any text unless you want to type any placeholders, which some people do, and then save and close. So we're in a blank document, file new, just in a blank document. Then I'm going to do file open and go and find where we saved our thesis. So by browsing, make sure you do browse, find your thesis. And we're first of all going to open the one called Thesis Chapter Template. Select Open and we're opening and we're inside the template. And if we could turn on our show hides so we can see where we're placed. We then want to use our style pane. So on the Home tab, do the styles launcher. On the Mac, press styles pane. And we're on chapter text. So this is what I thought we could make some changes to. So we need to look at our styles. And on the far side, there's a drop down. Next to chapter text, we're looking to modify. Now, making sure your document's the same as mine before we continue on. You're in Word and along the top it should actually say thesis chapter template. And if it's not, you need to do file, open, locate where you saved thesis chapter template. So now we're in the template and we're modifying chapter text. So the drop down next to chapter text, the word modify. So as I said, I made chapter text very small. I just made it Arial 14 point. I thought we could make it um, like the sample on the PDF I showed you earlier. We might make it 20 point. So change that to 20. Keep the bold, keep it as Arial, but down under the format at the bottom, so Windows and Mac are the same as what we're looking at, there's a font. Format drop down, select font. Arial bold 20 point, and under effects, you just tick small caps. So small caps still give you a capital for the the, the capitalized letters you do with the shift, but everything's in a uppercase and it's 20 points. So say OK and just say OK. We won't look at it yet because we need to execute the template to look at it. So we'll just make these changes. Next, I thought we could change heading three to be italic. So heading three, there's a drop down arrow to modify heading three. If you want italic and bold, you could do that. If you are going to continue on using heading four, which is just bold, which is just italic, or if you do not want bold, you could turn it off. So I'm going to keep mine as bold and italic for heading three and say OK. Now let's look at heading four from the drop down and modify heading four. 
So that one is italic and 12 points. So I'll keep that in case I do need it. Um, but at least I've got heading three now with italicized and bold. So they are still different. So say okay. And if you have um, something you use on a regular basis, you could create yourself a new style. Um, and it would be populated and live at the top of the list here with its specific name. So sometimes if you had a table and you're always putting a source at the bottom of a table, you may create a, sor a table, a style called sources for tables. And it might be in a smaller font with um, no line spacing around it. It's another feature you could create. Okay. If you wanted to change anything with the headers and footers that I've created, if you didn't want anything, you could now at this point double click and change the font or delete it altogether and delete or add the line if you want, wanted it to be removed. With the page numbers, if you just wanted them centered, you would go in at this point and double click and make them centered. So these are the types of changes you can make as you um, work with the template. So we've made those changes. So I might save and close. And then in the other template, we might change the body text thesis um, as, a, as a sample. So um, we've made that change. We just hit save and close. Looking at our files, we need to update my screen. Thesis chapter template has been updated at 2.11, so I know I've updated it. So let's double click and let's see how that new chapter text looks. So typing chapter one, and the shift enter. And then we're into our introduction and to our other headings to, to have a look at. So introduction would be our heading one and then our heading two would be applied to the next line and survey was heading three and survey data 2018 for heading four. Three, heading two. So that's how our levels of headings now look. Um, another option is heading one and heading two are both in 14 point. So if you wanted to modify them to have background research, I mean, sorry, heading two as 12 point, you would go back in, open the template and modify that. So it's best to have a play with the document and then make some adjustments into the template, save, execute as we did, and see how it lays out. So we'll just close that one. Uh, we don't need to save it unless you want to save it for your purposes. And if we could go to a file new blank document, we'll next modify the their template and we'll have a look at how we would change from Ariel to Calibria 12 point for our paragraphs and a lot of our headings. And then to wrap up this afternoon then we'll take a currently written chapter and put it into a template. So uh, we need to open up while we're in Word. Browse to our thesis folder and we want chapter numbering template and say open. OK. 
Okay. Then on our styles panel, we need to open it up. And once again, this one heading one, I've done 14 point and heading two, I've also done 14 point because I leave it up to the user to decide what changes. So heading one, we can modify that with our drop down, modify heading one. And if we make that 18 point, or you could use 16 point, I'll do 18, but if you think it's too big, for, especially for the type of text you might be writing, you could do 16 point. We can change all of these to Calibria if we're changing the, the text and we go down and find Calibria in the text. Say okay. And then all of our subsequent headings and our body text, we need to change to Calibria and alter the sizes if we're changing anything else. So heading two modify and change it to Calibria. Keep that as 14 because we made heading one larger. So say okay. And then we can just go through the list and modify heading three to Calibria and okay. And heading four. And if you want to change any of the italics um, as we did in the other one, you would do this at this point between three and four. If you want to turn it on in heading three, you could turn on italics, italics and bold for heading three. Looking back at the top of our list, body text thesis, we need to modify. And body text thesis, we need to um, change that one to Calibria 12 point because as I mentioned, Calibria 11 point might be a bit small in your writing, so you might want 12 point. Say okay. And we might have to change our quote. And we can modify our quote. So where you see heading nine, you'd look a little bit further down and you'll see quote. Drop down to modify quote. Change it to Calibria 12 point. And some disciplines don't use italics, they just have normal writing. So if you want to turn it off, you could. If you wanted to, it's full justified. If you want to change it to the jagged edge, you could do left. And you could also change um, the spacing before and after. Um, the default I've set it to is under format paragraph. And I've allowed zero before and 15 point after to start a new paragraph. But if you wanted to change it to zero after you could and then manually change it when you were starting a new paragraph. So if a lot of your quotes are in the middle of text, you could just change that to zero and go from there. So it all depends what you want from your um, document. Say okay. And the last one in the list there was caption. Captions what we use for our tables and figures that we'll look at next week. So the caption drop down, modify. Caption, we have to change it to Calibria, but I'd keep it as 10 point because it's the caption. <laughs> Um, unless you wanted to step it up one level to 11. So that's why, as I mentioned, you might want to have a play with using everything. Next, we need to just change the page numbers and headers and footers if we want them to be Calibria also. So our page numbers are set at Arial. So we would just change those to Calibria and along with the first instances of our even and odd pages um, fonts to Calibria. There is one last new style. 
I might recommend we create if you're going to be using a lot of tables in your document. So I've changed my odd and even headers and footers and page numbers to Calibria. So now that'll be reflected in the document. So design tab, close header footer. Now in our styles, I'll just make mine smaller if I can. There I am. In our styles, on the Mac, you just have a button located near the bottom called New Style. So if you click that, for those of you on Windows, you click the first double A's and get a new style. We could call it table text. And what this refers to is when you create a table, it'll automatically make it quite large. And this we can just select the style and I'll show you how to use it before we finish. And it reduces the line spacing and makes your table text easier to input. Because you're in a table, the style, style for the following paragraph should also be table text. Now, if you don't see table text from the drop down on a Mac, you might have to save, close, and come back in. I know on Mac, sometimes it doesn't populate the list. So just hit normal, then come back and apply it in a moment. But with the table, and you may also want to have smaller text, 10 point perhaps, or 11, we'll go with 11. And we want it to be single spaced because at the moment it's 1.5 spacing like our paragraphs and we don't want that in a table. So we change it back to single spaced. Then under the format drop down at the bottom, format paragraph. With the format paragraph, go all the way down to the spacing section and the after area. Change that to zero because at the moment we set up for a new paragraph, but we're not working in a paragraph, we're working in a table. So we just want zero and zero. We also might change the alignment to left so that um, the text doesn't spread across each individual cell. So press left and then at the bottom, select OK. So now this is our table text in Calibria 11 point, left aligned, single spaced, and press OK. Looking at our list, it's populated and put it here. Now for the Mac users, if you might have to go into table text, modify, and just update that style for following paragraph. And now in the Mac users should see table text and then press okay. So once again, we're in our document and we've made some changes and it's the template. So we need to put our cursor at the top and save and close. Save close and now we're ready to execute it. So, and this is also in my handout, you always need to be in file manager or finder on the Mac, find your template that we've just updated and execute it. So now we'll execute thesis chapter numbering template. And we're gonna call this chapter four and insert a table. So I'm placed right at the beginning of my heading one. And heading one is where we make our multi-level list drop down. So on our home tab, bullets numbering, multi-level list numbering. And we want to define a new multi-level list. In our more section, you should have the start at, and we're gonna jump all the way to chapter four. Say okay. And now it's chapter four. 
and we want to make sure that we include a table in chapter four so we can see how the um, table text style we just created will work. So in chapter four, we might just put a heading under 4-1 and we'll call it elements. And then we might just insert our table. Under insert, find a table and just create it. And by default, you can see it's quite large. So I'm just inserting a table three by three. The reason it's so large is if we look at our styles on the side, it's in body text thesis. So what I recommended was creating that new style by selecting the full table. Um, some computers easily show this marker, if not select the whole table then turn on your new style called table text just once and it'll fix those settings so you don't have to do it manually each time. So now I'm working in chapter four but I've actually already written chapter four. I'll show it to you here. Oh sorry I just need to open it again. on my desktop. So I've already written chapter four. It doesn't have a name. It does have some headings, but I've already written it in Times New Roman. Times New Roman actually used to be the more traditional font here at ANU. So if you do pull up a thesis, it's probably in Times New Roman. Um, I do have some students who are still submitting their thesis and it's in Times New Roman. So if you've already written in Times New Roman and you don't want to change, um, there's no discrepancy there from the, the examiners. It should be okay. Um, but if you are starting out new, it's recommended to use one of the other fonts. Uh, I did see the request for me to uh, send through that document I had shown earlier today with the, the font. So I'll include that when I send the recording so you can look at the difference between the four different fonts and how it sits out in the template. So here's my chapter I've written, but I want it to be in the new template. Um, if you um, apply the template, the margins and headers and footers don't come through. So instead, what I recommend is saving this template, uh, sorry, the ch current chapter you've written. I'm actually just going to close it, but I know it's called chapter four to be named. We go into chapter four and to bring in all that text, I just simply place my cursor on this location, insert, and I actually have a small video I've already sent to students and I'll send it as an attachment also to your follow-up email with, with this recording. Um, insert object and text from file because um, that way you don't have to watch the full hour-long recording for a refresher. You'll just, you could just save my um, small recording. Insert object text from file and I saved chapter four to be named and I'm just going to insert the whole file. So it came through and it's in Times New Roman. It does have the styles but they're not, they've actually converted into my fonts. So the, the headings came through okay. I don't need to make any changes except for the numbering. It's turned to chapter five and I can tell why right away. We have our heading one, chapter four. You can only have one heading one in a document. So this document, chapter four to be named, it was heading one in the previous document, but I've actually got heading four of research and it's turned on the numbering of chapter five. So I can just simply delete that whole line and my numbering has renumbered. 
I actually have an extra section, so I just need to select that and press delete. And then we're back to what we need. So the only thing is, when I wrote this, it doesn't have the body text thesis. So this is the only um, part where I need to apply um, the body text thesis. And anywhere in the paragraph, just click once and go over to your menu and body text thesis once. I don't need that extra marker I put in and I click and I do body text thesis. Now you could search and replace your normal font with body text thesis through search and replace. But if you had brought in any other data tables, it's going to change it. So it's up to you how you prefer to work. But if you zoom in smaller and select multiple paragraphs, um, it doesn't take long to quickly apply body text thesis to all your paragraphs to tidy it up. So that's how you can import text you've already written into the template. Just to review, you would still go to your thesis folder, execute whichever format you were using, just write some of your sections, and then when you're ready to insert the text, insert object text from file. We'll actually be using this feature when we put our thesis together next week um, to bring all our chapters together. And then I would find chapter four and I would insert it. Okay. Might stop the recording um, and open it up to questions. So just give me a moment.